My name is Kenneth Braswell. Um, I am the director of the New York State Fatherhood Initiative within the New York State Office of Temporary and Disability Assistance. Um, I manage a $3 million responsible fatherhood program that serves non-custodial parents across New York State. What did true manhood and what did true fatherhood look like in the 50s? And then how did it look in the 60s? And then how did it look in the 70s when most of our industrial jobs began to leave our communities and men who were making livable wages and obtaining retirement and, and taking care of their homes and having cars and, and all of the things that um, for them were the pieces that um, define how well of a protector and provider they were being for their families. When those things began to move out and the technology age began to move in and welfare reform began to move in and men became, became disconnected from their families and women began to take on a more prominent role in the protector and provider, men began to struggle with you know what they believe to be the intrusion you know on what was defined for them traditionally as the role of a man so what you had is the um, the love and the, the 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 love and the nurturers begin to move into the protection and the providers and there became became the struggle um, a struggle um, to which I believe we still have today I can make my own living just as well as he can make his he ought to be glad I'm working just because he can't stand competition, he wants me to quit. My work isn't important enough. I'm only a woman. But he, the man, is boss. That's a woman for you. Never tell what she'll do next. All the time I thought she was so sweet and tender. What a temper. Lucky I ducked out when I did. How could I win? I'm only a man. And in that struggle as that happened, men were told, you know, you can step back a little bit. You don't have to be, you know, the provider and the protector because women are more than capable of doing that. And as men were told to do that, their roles weren't redefined. Societally, we still looked at men as protectors and providers and we defined their manhood by those things. So it's not, you know, a stretch to see men now struggling and trying to find ways, um, very um, somewhat tragic ways um, in, 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 in showing society that they're trying to figure out what is the new definition of my manhood um, because that has not been defined for me yet. So there's a lot of work that has to be done. Okay. Yep, love of my life. Okay. Uh, she's very active, run, likes to very jump up and down a lot, running around. I need to keep up with her, so I gotta do something. <laughs> and that's the thing, you know what I mean? You know, staying healthy, man. You know, you gotta be healthy to hang around and be around for them, man. You know what I mean? Because uh, I know we get caught up at times and we wanna live our life selfishly, you know, spoil ourselves with the food and mm. whatnot, mm -hmm. and yeah. hang out and whatnot, but you know, we gotta, you know, stay healthy for them. One good thing yeah. that I, like I said, that I'm blessed about, smoke cigarettes. Mm. And I'm being honest, mm -hmm. after high school I started smoking cigarettes. Mm -hmm. I recently quit in the year 2005. Really? I'm, uh, this August would be four years. Okay. I've been clean, no okay. cigarettes, and just made up my mind with my daughter and out of breath a lot. And so I tried a certain uh, brand and uh, it helped me out. I think it's paramount that uh me as dad, father, uh, figure to the girls are a, a sign of health to them so they can uh, know how they should conduct themselves uh, throughout their lives and then just be around for them. Um, too many children I think nowadays that grow up maybe in a single parent family due to various reasons but uh, I know a couple friends of mine fathers had passed away early on and uh, I just want to do everything that I can do to be there as long as I can for my girls and maintain my health is just a, you know, automatic thing that uh, I believe I need to do. You know, that's good. That's, that's the thing about, you know, being a parent is that we're the, the number one educator, you know, when it comes to our children and you want to teach them the right way. So, and health is key.
I think when it comes to uh, men's health, particularly father's health, uh, we spend a lot of time um, worrying about and dealing with physical health, and we don't spend nearly enough time um, looking at our mental health. And I think in some aspects, mental health is more important than physical health. Um, if your mind is not right, it's very difficult for your body and anything else to get right. Um, one of the critical issues that we're working with now within the responsible fatherhood field is how fatherlessness affects um, one's psyche um, in trying to figure out um, how that plays on the development of his life as a man. Because one thing that I know, a lot of times if you are holding ill feelings against anybody for any reason, for anything that they've done, you know, that affects your walk, you know, that affects your peace, that affects your mental health, that affects your emotional health, you know, that even affects your spiritual health, you know. It's the relationship, you know, with the mother of your child that becomes the key to having full involvement with your child. And that's a difficult thing to do when emotions are in the way and where, you know, people are using children um, as um, weapons against another parent. And when the courts are not being sensitive um, to that situation and not being aware that some of that stuff can be going on and not asking the right questions and not um, tapping in um, to a culture that says that um, regardless of what the condition is, that women are more capable of taking care of children than men. You know, we are parents. Um, parenting is a learned behavior um, that we learn as children going up by models of parenting as we watch moving through our community. So everything that I know about parenting today, I know from what I watched growing up as a child. Nothing that Dr. Spock ever wrote about in a child's book has taught me anything about what I know about parenting. None of us are perfect. We're all figuring out this thing, you know, trying to look, because there's no manual. There's no manual about how to be a perfect dad, you know, so we're all learning as we go along. I read a lot of books, you know, Maximize Manhood, and, yeah. you know, Tender Warrior, and, you know, so many different books, Wild at Heart, you know, uh, Point Man, Finishing Strong, a lot of different books that I've read that have taught me a lot of things about fatherhood, but still in all, you know, the application of it as you're doing it, you're still learning a lot of things. And then the other piece is somewhat trial and error, that you know what you want for your child, you try to provide that for your child, and sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes as men, we make big mistakes. You know, sometimes women make mistakes. Sometimes they make big mistakes. You know, but the issue is trying to figure out how do you learn from your mistakes, backtrack, and move forward. You know, the time that it takes for some couples are much longer than it is for other couples. You know, it took, personally, it took me for about four and a half years to get my relationship with the, my, the child of my second mother at a place where we can communicate and not have emotional issues involved. Um, my older daughter is 28 years old and her and our mother have never gotten there. You know, my younger son, who is now five months, we've always been there. You know, so there's, is, is, you know, life is a funny thing, you know, and you have to be careful, you know, about how you choose, about who you choose as your life partners, because once you have a child, you have also obtained a life partner. And you have to figure out how to get, you know, how to be at least cordial enough with that partner um, so that both of you are on the same page to give your child, you know, what he or she deserves.